Raiders! Hell yeah! Has any of the quarterbacks differentiated themselves at all yet? Is there any, in your mind, a guy who you think's won? No, I don't think we've, you know, we sit there and say somebody's won yet. Uh, I think they both had good moments. I'll go back. I think Gardner's had, you know, Several days now where he's made some plays, but then there's also some turnovers that show up that we don't want to have happen as well. And again, when I look at Aiden, I see a, a guy that's you know throwing the ball accurate. I see some drops by our wide receivers, um, and I don't think it's just on the quarterbacks. I think overall our offensive play has to pick up since urgency, wide receivers, O line, just all those guys. Again, go back to the very beginning, of my opening statement of training camp. They're going against a very good defense, and uh, I think they're feeling that and. I think it's good for our, our team, the competition part, but obviously uh, somebody again has to just you know step up, and we're getting closer and closer, and obviously we're getting the game week mode a little bit as we get later in the week. Antonio, uh, you, you said coming into camp that Gar that Aiden had earned the right to take the first snap. Um, does that carry over to the game on Saturday, or or is it still to be determined in terms of who's earned the right to take the snap in the first preseason game? Yeah, it's their first snap of the off season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that was my statement. Okay. I got you. Uh, so have you decided then? Uh, no, we yeah. haven't. Like we got, we got, you know, we still got two more true training camp practices. Then we got Wednesday, Thursday, and then that's when we'll start looking at what we want to do game wise. But like I said, both quarterbacks want to play a legit quarter. Who goes out first and who goes out second really doesn't matter. They'll get a, hopefully an equal amount of snaps and opportunity to showcase. Antonio, you've had a, a few practices with pads on now. Have you been able to you know evaluate the trench play a little bit more? What have, what have you seen just both on offense and defense? From offense? Yeah, I like what we're doing offensively, getting off the rock, physical. Uh, getting to the second level, I, I like the little nastiness that we're starting to build amongst our offensive line and that group of just finishing down the field, finishing blocks, you know, putting guys on the ground and like I remember, you know, finishing them, truly finishing them. I think up front defensively, you know, got some really good players on that side of the ball, hard to block. I think Max has had a, a you know, tremendous camp, Christian as well, Byron Young, uh, Malcolm Koontz, those guys, Adam Butler, those guys have really stepped up. And then Tyree, the last couple of days, we started to see those strides. I think he's getting his legs underneath them again, just – Moving him around, and again, only a second-year player, not with a lot of snaps. Uh, I, I see improvement there as well. Any takeaways from the scrimmage on Saturday night? Yeah, I love the physicality that we played with. I love the guys wasn't shying away from it. There wasn't a lot of missed tackles. Um, I thought our secondary did a really good job of coming up, filling in the alley, our corners keeping force, uh, good job in the run game. And then obviously with the ball in the air, some of them DBs made plays, and that, that's what we're looking for, you know, turning the ball over, creating those opportunities for our offense. Week for the first time this season, even though we're, we're in training camp, does it still change the vibe a little bit, knowing that there's a game this weekend? Uh, I'm not there yet because we're truly in training camp mode. The next few practices is, is truly training camp type of uh, mindset as far as the periods, the emphasis, things that we're looking on. You see today an individual going back to basics, fundamentals, and technique. Uh, you see some one-on-one -on -one press. So we, we're still just honing on our true um, – technique and fundamentals that we want to have for the season. And then come Wednesday, I, I think it'll, it'll turn a little bit because that's when the coordinators and myself will talk about who plays, how much they play, and then a little bit in Minnesota. But it's all about the Rangers right now. The last couple of practices, Devontae hasn't been out there, so you've gotten to see some of the other receivers a little bit more. Has anything stood out about that yet? I thought Jacoby's picked up right where he left in the offseason. Catching the ball, the yak, full speed, competitive, tough. Um, I think as a group, you've seen other guys. Uh, DJ Turner's really stood out. Uh, he's made some plays down the field, some you know, some sweeps, some handoffs, and then obviously on the special teams, he's really picked up. Christian's had some moments, and some of those younger guys. As you get into tr training camp, you guys see how we're doing practice. You know, they get an opportunity. At the end of the day, you got to make the most out of them. It could be two, it could be five, it could be a whole scrimmage. But I think you know, some of those younger guys are making some catches and doing some things like that, and it'd be really good to see them come Saturday. Last note, I kind of noticed you guys like. Usually you see teams have like starters working on one field and backups on another. It seems like a lot of times you have everybody kind of together. So some of those reps, like you said, may only be a couple for, for drill. Yeah. Is there a certain reason why you structured it that way? Yeah, I just want to good on good and have everybody together just for learning too. You know, we got a lot of coaches, 29 coaches on the staff. So you're also stuff that we're talking about in meeting rooms. They could be next to a younger player talking to them about what's going on on the field. So the true mental rep that we talk about in National Football League is really happening because you got a coach next to you coaching you up throughout the play. Uh, no baby. No baby. <laughs> You're checking back here or do you just be the back in Vegas? Uh, whenever the baby comes, I expect him to come back. So I'm not going to rush the baby, not a doctor. <laughs> you uh, mentioned uh, DJ and Christian. As guys, guys on a bubble, their roster bubble, is it hard to get over that hump? And uh, what do you see as those guys getting to focus and kind of get over that hump? You want to see those two guys a bubble player? 
Um, I think DJ has just put himself in a good position. He's one of the best special teams players on our team, and I think in the National Football League. Very productive as a gunner, uh, very active. You know, he had a really good end of the season. Remember that Chargers game caused a fumble. And then he's really stepped up his game offensively. I think Christian's in the same boat. You know, he's kind of finding his role where he's at. You know, like he can play both spots, both Devontae's and Jacoby as a backup. But the key thing is going to come down to special teams. You know, how much Tom McMahon and you, you trust him, how much can our team rely on him to be a four-core guy? Well, he's been a player that uh, has showed up a little bit too. Uh, your thoughts on the young kid from Tennessee? Yeah, no, listen, I asked uh, EB the other day to start giving him some more reps with the twos, you know, get out of that, that younger guy group, see how he really competes with some of our other veteran players. He's done a good job. You know, he's had some catches, made some tough catches in, um, in traffic, but he's had drops too as a rookie. So just working on inconsistency, alignment. I think just that strain that we're looking for that, you know, these guys are starting to, their legs are getting tired. You know, we had a lot of, you know, several live practices now and periods and, you can see the training camp legs starting to come. You just got to fight through it. Any update on Jackson Powers Johnson or Colton Miller? No, status quo. Status quo. You mentioned the size and, and speed of D-Cam, and you made a play on Saturday night with a nice pack, pass breakup in the end zone. What have you seen as far as his growth so far? Man, just it, it's shocking to see because he doesn't say much. You got to kind of like, you notice when he's in because he's so big. But his speed, his length is really what attracted me and our, and our staff, and then obviously Telesco and, and those guys, the person that did a really good job of identifying him. But more important is toughness, right? He, he goes up there and he competes. He wants to play press. He wants to put his hands on people. That ties into what our pass rush is doing. So uh, he's fitting in well, and on special teams, he's, it's, it's, it's been lights out. He's done a really good job with uh, special teams, really buying into that. To say he's going to be a starting corner, I don't know. Maybe he gets a chance. I don't know. But right now, he's bought into to his role. Right, he's trying to be that third, fourth corner. More importantly, be a core special teams guy. DJ Blaze is a guy that's getting reps and, and making plays. Would you yeah. talk about him, please? Yeah, as you as you make plays and you produce, you get more reps. Regardless of who's there, it's all about competition. And he's just that quarterback. Constantly said that. So if he's was unique about him, man, we could really put him at right tackle, then switch him to the very next uh, group with the twos or whatever group, and put him at left tackle. And he doesn't flinch. And he's not shying away from some of our better players. You know, you see him going against Max and Tyree and Malcolm. And he's holding his own, man. He gets beat sometimes because he's going to some really good players. But you, what you see is a consistent, a consistent player, man. Like mentally, his assignments, alignments, he's not making a lot of mental errors, not a repeat offender. Yeah, you look at turn 22 on or Friday, I think, yeah. actually. Yeah. So we're talking about a young player yeah. uh, that's been able to. Is that, were you a, a little bit surprised by the, that poise of maturity for a kid so young? Well, we knew he was mature. I, I didn't think he would come along this. I didn't think what we would see physically from him out on the field against some of the elite pass rushers on our team that he would be able to hold up at times. Like, that's that's been impressive, and it's been consistent. It ain't just a one-time deal. It's nine on seven. It's you know, any team period. It's a situational period. He's really held up his own, and you can tell he's not really riding the highs and lows. I'm sure he's reading all about the press clippers right now, but he just goes out there and works each and every day. Status quo on a couple guys. Uh, is Dayton, is he going to be back this week on practice field? I believe today we, we should have him out today limited. Uh, I guess the, how far behind do you think he is? How, how long will it take? Uh, we'll see when he gets out there. I can't, I can't tell you that when I haven't seen him on the field. Coach, at the beginning of camp, you talked about how you wanted this energy to be up, you know, high, no pressure, have fun. With training legs coming in, how do you make sure that that energy and that stays consistent? Well, the players are really carrying that over themselves, right? Uh, we got the ultimate energizer bunny and Max Crosby and Christian Wilkes. And then you look at, you know, Diablo, Jack Jones on defense. And then, like I said, on offense, you know, Jacoby Myers is kind of that guy for us. And you love to see Trey Tucker really make that spark as well. Um, but it's really in our DNA now. So I don't talk about it. They, they go out there. You'll see when they start practice, they'll, they'll be excited and want to go. Like, these guys love being on the field and playing one, with one another and growing and building this team. You talk about DJ Glaze. You talk about the offensive line going up against a really good defensive line, obviously. You know, when you have guys like, you know, James as the coach and also Richie coming in, how have those guys really been able to help those offensive linemen? Yeah, I think James and Joe Philbin have done an outstanding job. Uh, I asked them to change the identity and um, the mentality of our offensive line to be a little bit nastier, meaner, tougher finishers. You had Richie Incognito in there, and then you, you sparked and you, you, you lit up the fire there. So these guys have done a good job. Richie's, I don't know if he'll be here today. I told him whenever he could come out, come on. But um, He's done a really good job of just mentoring these guys, just getting the mindset right, understanding what O-line plays like, what is it like to play O-line for the, the Raiders. And, but James and Joe, from a technique standpoint, from what we want to do schematically, have done an outstanding job with these guys because you can see it in the second, third group, right? Yeah, do they lose battles at time? Yeah, but they're going against a really good group in front of them. But what we're asking the unit to do consistently, all 15, 16 of those gentlemen is doing the same thing. Would you talk we've, seen, we've seen Jack Jones in special teams. Um, 
And he's obviously got big play uh, potential, saw that on, on Saturday. There were a couple of drops uh, earlier in the week, and he beats himself up. He's a guy that yeah. gets emotional because he cares so much. Is there, how do you kind of manage that part of it so that if it happened in the game, it doesn't affect the rest of his game? Well, before he gets to the game, he has to do it in practice. So I can promise you, if he's dropping balls, he won't be out there in the game. Cody and Dylan are two guys, because they're on the interior, they don't get noticed a lot, but have had good camps. Would you give us your evaluation, please? Yeah, and if I can add Pete in there as well. I thought Cody, Pete, and uh, Dylan have done a good job of just being stout. And then you're talking about two older players, and, and Pete and Cody, you know, 32, I think 30, but, man, they've taken almost every rep. No no complaining, just kind of go out there, that worker, workman's mentality. And I've always been a fan of having veterans in certain rooms, especially O-line, D-line. I mean, you can teach these guys how to – the tricks of the trade of playing the position, how to sneak, uh, cheat, how to get off the rock, timing up that, that snap count so you get advantage on the defense. They've done a good job. And I think Dylan, the move to right guard has helped him. You know, there's been some really good moments and been some moments we got to learn from. But he's bought into it. He's in a good space right now. He's in a good head space. He's competing. Um, and, he's, and he's growing. He's working on being better and better. With him and Mumford on that side, two young players that are really asc ascending. Thank you, guys. Thank you.